Hey there, this is Jess from Metabase. So let's talk about the differences between Metabase versus Power BI. So of course, I'm slightly biased. I'm from Metabase and I use it every single day. Uh, but this is mostly based on things that we hear from customers, people who have tried both Power BI and Metabase, is that they find Metabase just easier to use. There's a lower learning curve. People with or without technical skills can jump in, run their own reports, click around and get answers to things that they actually want to find out from their data. Um, so let's take a look at the two side by side. Um, let me jump over into my Power BI tab here. So this is a free trial of Power BI. This is one of their sample dashboards. Um, and you can see it's kind of nostalgic. I, I'm just missing Clippy here on the, the side. Um, there's a fair bit of kind of shared functionality between Metabase and Power BI. Uh, and one of those things is interactive dashboards. So you can click in and just kind of figure out what was going on in this month to make December uh, so much more high performing than the month previous. So let's just jump down to analyze here and explain this increase. Okay, so Power BI is generating a bunch of kind of sub analyses from this one month. So what have we got? Uh, I could see where my revenue has jumped the most in the past month that can be could be handy you can switch visualization types that's quite a lot um okay revenue by segment um i'm not quite sure what small and medium versus strategic means um but that's something that you could drill down further into i guess um no you can't okay um all right so that's quite a lot of information um, and maybe that answers some of the questions that you had going in. Let's just take a look at what it's like in Metabase. So we'll do the same here. We'll look at revenue and orders over time. This is our example dashboard, which ships with all new versions um, of Metabase. So let's just go to breakout. I want to find out what, um, what product category is my best selling in December. Okay, so there we go. I can see that widgets um, are the thing I'm selling most of, but Gizmo is bringing in the most revenue. Um, so that's maybe shows I've got a bit more control over what I can learn in Metabase. Um, another similarity between Metabase and Power BI is the subscription function. So um, you can send it via Slack, via email. Something that you can do in Metabase, which um, you cannot do in Power BI is send subscriptions to people outside of your organization. So I'm just going to make up an email address here. Um, there we go, we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna leave filters off for now. Um, in Power BI, you're kind of restricted to sending your subscriptions just to people within your own organization. So if I, I'll just do the same thing, acme.com, thinking about it. Yeah, okay, so I can't send to a domain outside of my organization. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind if you want to keep people like your clients or contractors in the loop with data changes. Um, of course, you might not, and that's also totally fine. Let's just discard that. Um, but let's jump back over here. Uh, so to sum it up, what else do you need to know about Metabase? So you can get set up within five minutes, um, connect to your data source. It works with whatever's already in your stack including Microsoft SQL Server, if that's something that you use. Um, we're trusted with over 50,000 companies' analytics. Um, so from startups using their first BI tool all the way through to enterprise-level customers who have data teams the size of small startups. Um, that includes companies like Datadog, Holland & Barrett, Comcast, Zalando, way more. Um, what else? We're open source. We have a number of premium plans for um, advanced security and governance options. Um, nothing left to do, but go and try it. You get a 14 day free trial um, and let us know what you think. Thanks.